Hi, my name is Natalie Kennedy and today I'm going to share with you seven different things that I do to manage my period pain and I'm actually just going to share with you my whole period routine starting from day one of my cycle. Um, the reason I wanted to create this video is because I used to have excruciating pain that would debilitate me at school and at work and I would sometimes miss work or miss school or call my mom and beg her to leave her work to come pick me up from school in the middle of the day or I would take ibuprofen which caused me stomach pain and ultimately because I was so hooked on ibuprofen and didn't have natural alternatives um, I firmly believe that it is one of the reasons that it disrupted my gut lining and caused me to have so many sensitivities down the line. So my hope is that through sharing these techniques with you and my routine that you can try um, one or seven, all seven of these and hopefully improve on your period pain and create a better relationship with yourself and with your gut, which is very intimately connected. All right, so there are seven things. Um, the first thing is not entirely related, but every morning, regardless of whether it's my period or not, I take my basal metabolic temperature and I have what's called a BBT um, thermometer. This one's by Proven. I Proven. I will share the link with you below. And essentially, you should know that throughout your menstrual cycle, your temperatures are going to fluctuate depending on if you're in an estrogen dominant part of your cycle or in a progesterone dominant part of your cycle. So the first half of your cycle, in general, estrogen is increasing. Um, and throughout the second half of your cycle, estrogen is generally on its way out and progesterone is dominant. However, um, actually, let me get back to that. So uh, when your progesterone is high, your temperature is generally higher. And progesterone's role is mainly to make sure that after you ovulate, you don't release another egg. So as soon as there's a spike in, te in uh, temperature, that means you've ovulated and now you're in your like high progesterone phase. Um, however, uh, progesterone will drop as soon as uh, your body is ready to um, release the uterine lining and kind of let the egg go if it hasn't been fertilized. So through monitoring your body temperatures, um, you can learn to anticipate when you're going to have your period and also when, you, when you're ovulating so that you can um, have a better idea of when you're fertile to let you know if you should or should not be having sex or be using um, a more, I guess, aggressive form of birth control. If you want to know more about um, taking your charting, this is called the charting technique, and it's also called um, the fertility awareness method. I highly recommend this book, which in this video is backwards. Great. I will try to fix that. But this is called um, Taking Charge of Your Fertility by Tony Weschler, and it is a transformative book as to understanding how your cycles work. So this is the first thing I do is I take my temperature and once I see that drop in temperature, even if I haven't started my period yet, I know that my period is either coming that day or very, very soon within the next 24 hours. The first thing I do when I know that that's coming is I make an enormous pot of ginger tea. I take ginger, I uh, peel it maybe about an inch or so or two inches depending on how much you want to make. Um, I slice it and I boil it for 20 minutes and generally the water should turn relatively yellow. Um, ginger is one of the most anti-inflammatory herbs that exists. Um, in studies, it's been shown that um, ginger is more effective than placebo and uh, is as effective as ibuprofen without the side effects of ibuprofen like um, disrupting the prostaglandins that protect your stomach lining. So um, try it out sometime. <laughs> ginger is wonderful for getting rid of cramps or at least preventing them. Uh, the second thing I do is uh, I adjust what I'm eating for that first, I guess, three to five days. So generally, uh, one reason we get cramps is it's our body's way of letting us know that we have too much estrogen circulating through the cycle. Um, estrogen is supposed to be pretty low during our period time. So if you're having pain, that means that not enough estrogen was flushed out. So one way to take care of the liver in detoxifying the excess estrogen so it's not being recycled through the body is to eat lots and lots of leafy greens, especially things like broccoli, cabbage, kale, collard greens, Swiss chard. These are all wonderful for flushing out the body. Um, in addition, things that have pectin or like a gelatinous quality to them, um, unsweetened jellies, um, seaweed, hijiki, wakame, 
kelp, our kombu are all really, really good things to kind of pull stuff literally out of our poop. And this, uh, cause that's where we dispose of that excess estrogen, right? It's gonna come out of our poop. So we wanna make sure that our colon is being flushed out efficiently. And buckwheat, I forget why buckwheat is so great. I can put that in the, um, the description below. Okay, uh, after breakfast, I will usually head to my shower and I will turn the hot water on. It'll be like a steaming hot shower. And I will lay down, on, lie down, lay down <laughs> onto the bath floor on my back. And I will get into happy baby yoga pose. So it will be a very hip opening pose. It's very easy for blood to flow from there. And then I will take the hot water and put it onto my abdomen. So that stimulates a lot of blood flow without restricting it, like with a tampon or something. You want to give it space to release. Um, have you ever felt during your cramps like there's something literally clenching and stuck? If that's the case, on a subconscious level, putting something back up in there isn't allowing things to literally flow. Um, so giving your body some permission to release um, is, is critical. The, after I get out of the shower, I apply Clericom essential oil. Um, I've found that doTERRA's brand works really well for me, but you might have luck with another brand as well. But Clericom and doTERRA is a very, or doTERRA is a very reputable brand. So this is what it looks like. Clericom, monthly blend for women. Um, so I get out of the shower, I apply Clericom because your pores are open and more receptive to receiving um, as oils. Clary sage in particular has a very balancing effect on hormones. So uh, if you're feeling very angry, it can make you feel more balanced. If there's an estrogen imbalance, there are, is some ev evidence. Even if it is anecdotal, I'm not 100% sure how many studies have done been done specifically like through PubMed or anything like that, but it's helped for me. And then I'm stuck smelling it all day and now I associate clary sage with periods and it's like a really weird dynamic when I'm teaching yoga and I smell it because I'm like, does anyone else smell it and know I'm on my period? So if you ever smell clary sage on me, you know I'm during that time of the month. Okay, um, the next thing I will do is I will um, massage acupressure points that support liver detoxification. So the way I discovered this is uh, I used to go to my acupuncturist to deal with my menstrual cramps. And he would always prick the same places and it always hurt when he put the needles in. So the places he usually put the needles in were about three fingers below my navel. And also he would put three to four uh, needles along my inner thighs, which were a very sensitive area. And even now, if I just take my thumb and push along the inner thighs, I can find specific points in areas that are very sensitive. And those are acupressure points connected to the liver, at least in my experience, which is very limited because I'm not an acupuncturist or a Chinese medicine doctor. Um, so what I decided is like, okay, well, what if I don't have money to spend on an acupuncturist this month? Or what if I don't have time? Or if it's too far of a drive? So what I started doing is um, acupressure massage on myself, but it's more myofascial release. So I use a Yamana ball. It's about the size of my head. And I uh, get on my stomach and I roll the inner thighs up to the knee and back down towards the psoas muscle. And I do that on each side for about five minutes, switching, I'll do a little bit along the low back and around the, uh, the ovary area, although I'm pretty gentle on it because that can be sensitive. Also, outer boob area is a wonderful place to get into it. Um, I don't necessarily think that you need a Yamana ball in particular, I just like it because it's not very rigid or hard or aggressive, it kind of gives way a little bit and allows your muscles to be moving in their natural, I guess, grain uh, direction. And then after that, I will wrap myself in a robe, I will drink my ginger tea, and I will sit in bed for most of the day and journal and read and catch up on all the things. I give myself a deep, deep, deep permission to rest that day. 
Um, I specifically avoid creating too many social commitments because that is a time for myself. And I really believe on a, a spiritual, emotional level that my body's pain, excruciating pain was my body trying to communicate to me that I wasn't taking care of myself or not taking enough time to take care of my emotional and physical well-being. And it's a very effective way of getting our attention, right? It's a pain that's so deep in our core that begs us to listen. And rather than taking ibuprofen to mask that pain, one of the best ways is to listen to that pain. And if your pain is really extreme, then your body is desperate for you to listen to it. So um, trying not to take appointments and uh, being very gentle with yourself. Obviously, I understand that some people have very stressful jobs and may not have the luxury that I do of taking time off, but it can be as simple as adding a five minute meditation to your morning um, to at least give yourself the mental space for yourself and honor this, this special time in your life. I don't believe that women are meant to be optimally functioning the same way every single time of the month. So thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed uh, learning these seven things that I do to improve the quality of my period. As always, uh, any questions that you have are welcome and I'm happy to answer them. So thank you so much for listening and have a great period and the rest of your day.